Bom dia, Valencia. It is a great honor to have the opportunity of keynote at KubeCon Europe this year. We are from the open source cloud and AI team in Huawei. Uh, we are members of the CubeEdge Volcano Kamada project. In addition, I was involved in the early days of forming Kubernetes Policy Working Group and the CNCF Security Tech. I want to give a big shout out to Igor Dorowski, who has been instrumental for helping me to kickstart the Policy Working Group effort. Um, I want to say, dude, uh, you are in my prayer each and every day, and please stay safe, and hopefully in the near future, uh, we can meet face to face uh, for a discussion. So the topic we're going to present today is about uh, incremental deep learning for satellites with CubeEdge and MindSpore, which is a newly open source deep learning framework. So let's have a quick overview of the satellites. LEO, short for Low Earth Orbit Satellites, has been a recent trending topic in space industry. For example, people are most familiar with the starting effort from SpaceX. There are still many problems lies ahead for LEO satellite. For example, the problems of constellation management, the problems of uh, how to minimize the cost of communication between the Earth and the orbit, the problems of monitoring uh, of health status, uh, debris, uh, collision avoidance, and also the problems of creating new application scenarios, for example, uh, for climate change, uh, for space mining, uh, for deep space learning. So last year, with collaboration among BUPT, PKU, CMCC, and Huawei Cloud, the first satellite from the Tianzuan uh, or the Sky Computing Constellation program was launched. With that, we actually did an experiment, experiment uh, which is truly pioneering. We combined the space technology with cloud native and AI. So in the next two sections, you are going to hear from two extraordinary speakers on how CubeEdge and MindSpore helps the cloud native and AI technology in space. So next up, please welcome Bao Yue from the CubeEdge team to give a deep dive on cloud native for space. Now let me take over the presentation to introduce how CubeEdge works in cloud native satellites. CubeEdge is designed for edge computing and cloud edge coordination. We launched it in 2018 and it became a CNCF sandbox in March 2019. It graduated from sandbox into a CNCF incubation project in September 2020. And from 2020, we have made some in-depth attempts at a wide range of fields. We now have five, six and working groups, including the AI SIG, Device IoT SIG, MEC SIG, Robotics SIG, and the Wellness Working Group. Since the launch until now, Kubeage has a healthy growth. We have held lots of conferences and meetups, attracting people from all walks of life to join us. We now have more than 900 contributors including 260 code submitters. All of these people are from more than 70 organizations. Let's take a look at the Kubeage architecture. Basically, Kubeage is a natively extended Kubernetes. We have two components, cloud and edge. In the cloud, we have a cloud core. It talks to Kubernetes and uh, process the request to the edge. The edge has an edge core, and it talks to container engine and uh, devices. The edge takes down to 17 megabytes memory footprint to run, and also support the OCI confluent container runtimes. There are some 
key features of the Kubeage. First, we support the Kubernetes native APIs for developers. We also support seamless cloud edge coordination, edge autonomy, low resource environment. With the IoT devices, Kubeage provides the device mapper to simplify the integration with different device protocols. Also, we provide a cloud view of global metrics from the data. Sedna. The Sedna project is an AI toolkit over Kubeage. It provides the Edge Cloud Synergy AI framework to support joint inference, incremental learning, and federated learning. In Sentinel architecture, you can find we have a centralized global manager in the cloud to coordinate with all the components on different edge nodes. On each edge node, we have a local controller to control the edge cloud AI tasks. And it also manages the datasets, models, status, synchronizations. Sedna also provides APIs for developers to quickly integrate the third-party algorithms through the library. Based on the framework, the component worker runs training and inference tasks, both on the edge and the cloud. Kubeage and Sedna play an important role in the cloud native satellite. It enables the edge com computing on the satellite and uh, the joint AI inference between the satellite and the ground stations. First, the satellite is used to build multi-module joint inference in the satellite and the ground. Incremental model learning is on the ground. In this way, a small module is used on the satellite and a large module is used on the ground. So the satellite requires few resources to achieve better AI inference effects. In addition, the device mapper of the Kube edge is used to model and manage sensors of the satellites in, in a unified manner allowing management personnel on the ground to obtain the working status of onboard devices in real time. All of these communication with each other are through a highly reliable cloud edge channel established by the Kube edge. Next, let's welcome Xiaoman to give a deep dive on how Mandespore completes the task role for incremental learning with Kube edge. Satellites are generating thousands, even millions of images every minute of the day. These data are useful for obtaining information about farming area, up-to-date online maps, and lots of other data. Having the ability to optimize a vast amount of data using artificial intelligence and cloud native is important for end users. But how can it work if we like to detect the farming area on using this data? There are two stages that you can see on the slides. We will train an image detection model by MySport with tremendous amounts of data. So MySport ULO V3 tiny model is pre-deployed on a satellite and served with Qubit Setna via TinyMS with a size of no more than 30 megabytes, which fits in with the satellite's memory. The satellites can detect the farmland area by themselves. But some cases can't be recognized because of its low precision model. So when discovering hard samples, Qubit Setna local controller compresses and sends these data sets to the ground using a high precision image detection model for inference. These hard samples can also be used to train a new model and improve the precision. So the Qubit Setna global manage performs incremental learning tasks using MySport to train it.
After refresh the model that is fine tuned and retrained by my sport, Cubit Setna pushes a complex partial model with a size of 3 megabytes, which fits in with a 1 million bits per second of light to the satellite. When satellites receive a complex partial model, my sport decompresses and updates the model. And then Cubit Setna redeploys a new model so that the accuracy can be better using new models in the end. When satellites receive the compressed partial model, my sporter decompresses and updates the model. And then, Cubit Setna redeploys a new model so that the accuracy can be better using new models in the end. You heard the word my sporter many times, so what is it? My sporter is a newly open source deep learning framework which was launched on March 28, 2020. It is a really user-friendly AI framework that only requires the developers to master the basics of tensors, operators, models, and Python programming without a steep learning curve on many of the underlying complexities. Moreover, with the features such as high-order differentiation optimization, automatic parallelization, and graph operator fusion, my sport could achieve very high performance. I will just introduce three core features of my sport here. My sport performs automatic differentiation based on source code conversion using the just-in-time compiler. It supports complex control flow structures such as well A4 and flexible function programming such as higher order functions and closures. Secondly, you know that automatic parallelism uses serial algorithm code to implement distributed parallel training and maintain high performance. The paradigms of distributed parallel training include data, model, and hybrid parallelism. MySport uses a new type of distributed parallel training that integrates all these paradigms. Therefore, by the given data, MySport shortens image classification model training by 23% with Resident 50 and the duration of Chinese free training models by 62% with BIRDS when fully utilizing the hardware computing power with full image offload on devices and deep graph optimization. Thirdly, MySport deploys one framework for devices, Edge and Cloud. This strategy of develop once and deploy everywhere boosts the development and deployment efficiency. Our team also developed a high-level API toolkit for Mike's War, which are called KineMS. You can see the architecture on the bottom of this slide, aiming for a now AI central service fast adoption of deep learning framework capabilities, especially for new beginners. Since its inception, MySport established an open and global community for developers. In merely two years, MySport has achieved more than 1.2 million downloads with more than 20 MySport study groups created all around the world. The community adopted open governance with a 40-member technical steering committee and 26 or workshops. The community has also pioneered inequality and diversity with efforts like MSU Women in Tech. With various community partners, not-for-profit collaboration like pre-trained ultra-red camera model for natural protection further helps AI for good. As I said before, my sport can make incremental deep learning simple. The AI workflow in this case has been explained in detail. The model we trained can detect features that are nominal, such as typical finite shapes, and differentiate them from unusual patterns. We can use AI to determine which datasets are important to send to the ground segments for processing. This can ease burdens or constrain the space to ground network experience with the transmission of large volume data. Since Kubernetes and MySport have many other amazing capabilities, we think a lot of AI technologies we described above will be used and many more will be developed over in the next couple of years to assist this mission and many more. Such as deep based learning and cloud native policy. And in the future, we hope that cloud native space computing that can enable better orbit grounds and orbit orbit communication, monitoring, and resource management. If you are interested in this project, you can join the community and participate in experiments. Just scan the QR code and follow our channels.
like our websites, Twitter, and some other social medias. We will share the latest news with you. Thank you. Bye-bye.